Anyone that knows me well enough will know that I love Halloween. It is without a doubt my favourite day of the year. This is something that I've been saying to people more and more often lately, but a lot of people I know don't really seem to get why. I mean, I get why people like Christmas time, I get why people like Easter, those are all good holidays too, I guess. But they ain't got nothing on the spookiest day of the year. It's the only holiday that I've celebrated on this channel on more than one occasion, with a scary, spooky top 10 that I did a few years ago. Last year I did Alien Month, which I really wanted to do again this year year because I was super proud of it last year but I got ill so I didn't really get a chance to do that. Really sorry about that. Maybe next year? I don't know. And even while I was studying game development at college a few years ago I had an entire pre-production booklet for a game I was working on called Attack of the Planet Snatchers which unfortunately will never be made so I guess I don't mind showing you some of it if you want to. I mean you have no say in the matter, I've already done this video, so whatever. <laughs> Simply put, if I loved Hallow's Eve any more than I already do, that would mean that I would like it a whole bunch, I guess. And hopefully in this video, I'll be able to tell you why. Ah! Ew, that is gross. So, as a kid, I was always a bit of a wuss. I remember being six years old and being shown Scary Maze Game for the first time by my brother. To say the least, I didn't really respond to it very well and I couldn't go to sleep without a nightlight on for an embarrassingly long time that I won't disclose. But even back then, I still loved Halloween, so it was never really a love for horror that made me enjoy it as a kid. I mean, sure, nowadays I can watch any horror film without a problem, but back then, it was more or less the opposite, really. Does this look like the kind of kid that could handle a scary movie? Because it really is. Isn't. No, see, what I came to love about Halloween was, well, pretty much every other aspect. Games like Muppets Monster Adventure or Gregory Horror Show or Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, a game I've never actually owned or played physically, but my brother used to have it on an emulator on his PC, which back then felt like cheating the Matrix. I always liked the Halloween specials that they would play on Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, whether it's a Halloween-themed episode of Fairly Odd Parents, SpongeBob, Rugrats, or it's an entire show like Ariel Monsters, or a TV movie like Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island or Halloween Town if anyone else remembers that. None of these things really ever scared me, necessarily, but I always loved the style of them. Just so creepy and cool and fun. The scary, spooky organ music, the colours and the atmosphere used to depict a graveyard or a tomb or a haunted house. I always loved the atmosphere of Halloween, whether it was in Mad Monster Mansion in Banjo-Kazooie, the bloody soundtrack in Muppets Monster Adventure that is now etched into my mind forever at this point. The amazingly 90s weather-worn covers of the Goo Goosebumps books that I own. It was always the creepy that I was drawn to, never the downright nightmare inducing. Anything that actually scared me? Ech, no, thank you. But the way this music sounds. It's so spooky and Halloween-y, I love it! How could you not love it? Simply put, if it includes a graveyard, some fog, a scary tree, maybe a pumpkin or two, I'm all about it! But I've gone on enough about that. There's way more to Halloween than just the atmosphere of spooky things. I mean, you can experience that any day of the year. But as a kid, the entire thing, it was a bloody ritual to me. Like the aisles on Halloween, like supermarket aisles, they were amazing to explore. I mean, you know, half the Halloween decorations they'd stock at, you know, as they're all co op were always really, really tacky. Just the most horrible latex mask with that horrible texture that had hurt when taking it off, and a plastic axe that made sci-fi ray gun sounds for some reason. <laughs> Didn't make any sense, but I loved it. It was really tacky, like I said, but I loved the tackiness. I loved the face paint that didn't really work. I loved the stupid, spooky music that they'd play for that aisle only. I loved all of it. Also, oh my god. God damn, I loved trick-or-treating. I mean, I still do, to be honest. I mean, not that I do it. I still would, is what I mean. It, it's, it does still hurt that I'm too old for it now. And I don't think I've ever admitted that out loud. Nor should I, really. I'm probably going to edit that out. And it isn't even like getting candy or chocolate. I mean, I can never eat too much of that anyway. Maybe it's just the way I used to look at it as a kid. And maybe without my rose-tinted glasses, maybe it isn't really this cool. But the idea of there being one night of the year where the kids rule the streets, you know? Like, it's such a cool idea. Idea. Everyone's out of the house, dressed as a spooky monster, roaming the streets for candy and chocolate. I mean, of course it sounds creepy when I put it that way. Obviously, I'm talking from the point of view of a kid. I'm not saying as a 22-year-old I love seeing kids roam the streets. That's not what I'm trying... Don't tarnish the point I'm trying to make here. As a kid, obviously, seeing nothing but other kids own the night in a sense is... 
it's magical. Now again, like I said, as a kid, it's magical. As an adult, it's really bloody annoying because all I want to do is watch a film, but trick-or-treating kids keep knocking on the door, even though I put a sign on the door saying that we've got no candy. I mean, we do have candy, but I'm eating it all to myself. I'm not giving it to you because I want all the candy for myself because I'm trying to watch a film. Stop knocking on the bloody door. Nowadays, I'd probably be just as sentimental and teary-eyed talking about going to, a, you know, more adult affairs like Halloween parties, for example. But A, I've not really been invited to many, actually, and B, at this point, I'd want to funnel my love for Halloween into a seriously outlandishly crazy costume to the point where I kind of just can't really be bothered. In other words, I can't handle my own passion for this bloody holiday. Either I go big or I go home, and because I'm never invited to parties, I always go home. I tell you though, seriously, if I ever had the opportunity, I would bloody kill as the host of a Halloween party. I'd get a fog machine, I'd get some decorations, some spooky Halloween music. Obviously, like, you know, party songs like Monster Mash. I wouldn't play the score to Psycho or anything. Well, maybe actually, that's not a bad idea. Not only that, but I'd make it a rule to turn up in something actually scary, or at least, you know, something of that genre, I guess. Oh, what's that? You're, you're a hitman. Oh, you're James Bond. Oh, nice costume. You just dusted off the old suit. Nice one. Oh, what's that? What's that? You're, you're, you're a Disney princess. Oh, that's that's really spooky. You're in, you're a sexy nun. Okay, good. Obviously. <laughs> you're, the, you're the Irish flag. You're an eggplant. Oh, thanks for turning up. My party's ruined. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna let you in if you turn up looking like that. It's a Halloween party. What are you doing? I'm legitimately pissing myself off looking at these. That's, oh my God. I don't understand where pirates come into the equation. You're a, f oh my God. If you dress for a Halloween party in the same way that you dress to a funeral, maybe just don't bother turning up at all, you know? Stay at home, unless you're the host, in which case, leave. Leave the party to someone else to sort out. Why even host a Halloween party if the only costume you have is a suit? What precedent does that set for your fancy dress party? You're an arsehole. I mean, at least you're not a, a pirate or a crayon, but <laughs> you're an arsehole. You know, I think I, I think I've kind of figured out why I'm not really invited to Halloween parties that often. Huh. Nowadays, what I tend to find myself doing on Halloween is kicking back, watching spooky movies, and doing Halloweeny things with a friend or two. Usually one, sometimes none. There's an endless amount of great games and movies to enjoy on Halloween, and I was going to list some of them in this video, but honestly, it's so bloody long that I can't really be bothered. So what I'm going to do instead is just talk for a few seconds, ramble on about whatever, and let the footage play over my voice so you can see that there's a lot of examples. I just can't be bothered to talk about them because I might die of old age before I'm done with it. And that's only counting the games. That doesn't even go into the amount of bloody movies there are. There's so goddamn many. Some movies that people love, some movies that not a lot of people talk about, some movies that a lot of people don't like, but I see a lot to like in them, just a lot of things that result in a very fun day of spooks and frights and sights and maybe even fights. You never know what Halloween's gonna bring. Someone might get stabbed. You never know. It's spooky. I only hope I have enough footage to last for that entire bloody ramble that I just did. Maybe it will give you some idea of what you can enjoy on Halloween, maybe. I don't know. Who cares? As I was saying at the very beginning of this video, my love for Halloween is so intense that I wanted to funnel it into my very own video game called Attack of the Planet Snatches. So I did some searching and I did find the original presentation that my team and I used to pitch the game, but it isn't very good. So without further ado, here's my pitch for Attack of the Planet Snatches, 2017 edition. If you can't tell by the name, the game was intended to be an homage to 50s B-movie horror flicks, inspired primarily by movies such as Invasion of the Body Snatchers and Universal Monster Movies. I essentially envision the game as a 3D version of Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, with many levels to explore and things to do. I don't remember my team and I really ever settling on too much of a story, but we did have the basic idea that Jimmy and Jenny's friends and family were under attack by aliens and monsters, so it was up to them to save the town. Again, very similar to Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. There were so many ideas that I had for and things I really wanted to try, but in the end, it didn't really come to fruition because I left college. I kind of screwed over my team in the process. If you're watching this, guys, I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I kind of realized that video game design didn't really interest me in the slightest. I mean, I was interested in pitching the game and working on it, but being at college at the time meant getting the hang of 3D modeling and coding and everything else on top of that, and it just wasn't really what I was looking for. So, unfortunately, as it currently stands, Attack of the Planet Snatchers is nothing more than a pipe dream. Who knows? Maybe one of these days I'll be able to make my dream game into something more. 
So that pretty much covers why I love Halloween as much- Oh, wait a minute, hold on! One final thing before I cap this video off. One of my friends slash editing clients from America recently shipped over some American Halloween cereal that I'd always wanted to try. For those who don't know, the selection of cereal in the UK is a pretty depressing sight, and knowing that those across the pond get to enjoy a little piece of Halloween every day for breakfast made me bright green with envy. And now that I finally get to have some booberry crunch and count chocolate of my own, here's what I thought about them. Yeah, I mean, it's alright. I mean, it's just cereal, really. Just fruity cereal with a Halloween mascot slapped on it. It's about what you'd expect. Yeah, I mean, it's alright. Thank you very much to Brandon over at Dujin Shinji for that cereal. Really was very, very cool of you. I'm sure I liked it. I'm recording this before I've actually, you know, recorded the part where I try the cereal. I'm sure I'll love it because, you know, it's exactly the kind of thing I like to eat. So I'm sure I will love it. Thank you very much. So to be honest, despite all the reasons I've given in this video, I'm still not entirely sure why I love Halloween as much as I do. A part of me still kind of feels as though I haven't properly tapped into what it is. I think to put it simply, it's just such a weird and fun holiday. It's the one day of the year where the local librarian, for example, goes nuts and dresses up as a spooky monster. Or a crayon, apparently. It's the one night of the year where, like I said, kids get to rule the streets in pursuit of candy, and all the stuck-up adults of the world just kinda let go. They admit that it's fun to dress up. Every other day of the year, they might see cosplaying as some stupid nerd shit. But for that one night, sure, why not dress up as Mario? Or should I say funny plumber? <laughs> Why not just embrace the weirdness of it all and just be a kid again? Oh, I might collapse. I might- Oh, it's getting in my eye! Why can't I just do something normal for Halloween? What am I doing? It's 9am! Ah, my eye! It is in my eye. It's the holiday that produces the tastiest candy, the coolest of movies, whether you're an adult or a kid, the most charming stories, and I guess when you're a kid, some of the best memories. To some people, this video might come off as either very therapeutic and relatable, or overly sentimental and indulgent. I won't deny the latter either way, but I don't know. Hopefully it gives at least a little bit of insight into why Halloween is absolutely my favourite day of the year.